Kassan will be moderating our workshop entitled Protecting Shared Computation Cloud Security. Just to think about cloud security or the cloud in itself, it's an emerging technology. It doesn't have more than 20 years, but to break the abstraction of what the cloud means, we need to understand what society is. Cloud computation is about sharing. It's about the devices being connected in an infrastructure where the computational ability of it can be accessed through all. So in our race of creating an internet for all, cloud computation is a way and a mechanism that can actually improve how we get there. Our workshop will be based on some policy questions that reflect on the nature of the internet. The internet in itself has three major principles of it being open to boost accessibility, decentralized in a matter that each and everybody can have access to it and end to end, which means a secure pathway to get there. It's the same as understanding that you need to go somewhere and get something. You need to know how you get there through the road, the data, and also the mechanisms to get you there. What I'm trying to say is that there are standards and protocols in any mechanisms that can ensure security. And security today is ubiquitous to everything. We secure our thoughts, we secure our homes, and how do we secure data, especially on the internet? We have a list of incredible speakers today who will be taking their time to actually dissect the topic and give us different perspectives on what we mean when we say cloud security and actually why it is important. To begin with you, uh, Juliana, why do you think this is important? And uh, I would like you to speak at a protocol level. What are the standards that are important in sending or incentivizing more security that accessibility of the cloud is ubiquitous to everybody that each and everybody can get that end-to-end -end data that they want. Thank you so much, Carson, and thank you, Nancy, as well, for the invitation to be here today. It is a pleasure to talk to you all about this topic, especially after COVID, in which we can meet in person. Uh, so, as Gabriel uh, rightly said, uh, in the last few years, cloud computing has shifted from being simply a buzzword to becoming an actual practice, a mainstream practice in industry. Uh, there are, of course, uh, a lot of reasons for this. Uh, it's a very convenient uh, model of computing because it allows organizations to um, uh, or to basically uh, use on-demand computing resources such as networks, such as servers, such as software, uh, which they can maintain without having to be uh, the owners of this uh, of this technology. So it is a possible nowadays, for instance, for a startup to have a scalable business model without having to own an entire warehouse of servers or without having to build software from scratch. So it is a very important business model for startups and, and growing businesses to uh, save money on resources and to be able to scale up uh, their business models. Uh, so this is the importance of, of cloud security today uh, because when we outsource your infrastructure, you're also uh, going into risks uh, for privacy, uh, from a privacy standpoint and also from a cybersecurity standpoint. Um, and I'm not here saying that these risks only exist because of cloud. Some of them already existed before in more traditional ways of, of, of computation. However, uh, many of them are pot potentialized because of the cloud uh, and the way uh, the architecture of the cloud is designed. Uh, so for instance, when we're talking about storage, uh, if you're storing data remotely, uh, you're running into the risk of uh, doing cross-border uh, cross data flows. Uh, there are a series of uh, liability discussions around this. Uh, when we're talking about network, uh, if you're using, uh, if you're building your resources on a remote server, you rely on the internet infrastructure and you are subject to uh, network risks that are associated with using cloud infrastructure as well. Uh, and without mentioning as well, authentication, uh, identity management risks, because uh, when you don't own your own servers, uh, you have to trust your cloud provider that uh, there will be enough security in the, in the premises uh, so that people won't physically have access to, to this infrastructure without having the right to do so. Uh, but also on your own side, as, as Gabriel rightly mentioned, this is a shared uh, architecture, you also need to have your own protocols for identity management. So not only the cloud provider should comply to cybersecurity best practice, but also the companies that rely and the organizations that rely on this infrastructure and in the service in general. Uh, so answering your question, I think uh, when we're talking about uh, shared responsibility, 
uh, we cannot only say that cloud providers are the ones that should comply with protocols and good practice. They obviously should, but they are not the only agents involved in this. So the organizations and, and the individuals using cloud services should have also at their own aim and uh, write uh, protocols and, and best practices on how to deal with this infrastructure. And there are already a series of regulations and frameworks being developed at global level that deal with how to have a secure shared infrastructure for computational resources. Uh, the ITU, for instance, is one of the organizations that works on building standards for, for, for cyber security on, on, on the cloud and, and in shared infrastructure as well. Uh, but also this needs to consider uh, the sizes of organizations because when we have a, a startup of 10 developers working 12 hours uh, to maintain a service, uh, cybersecurity should also be inserted into their list of priorities. And if the standards and the, and the models that are built globally are, are too abstract or hard to implement for small companies and companies coming from the global south, then you're only protecting one end of the equation there. You're only protecting your cloud providers. They're able to comply with these standards and they're able to implement them on a practical level. So uh, differences in, uh, in size and also in, in the region where, where organizations are located should also be taken into consideration. So there should be more incentive for, for these uh, organizations who are smaller, who have less resources, can also invest and maintain a reliable system uh, using shared uh, computational resources. I probably already spoke more than time allows, so I'll give the floor back to my fellow moderators. Thank you very much, Juliana. And that's quite interesting what you've said, uh, the importance of actually having regulation and cross data flows across the globe. Uh, we will go to Ihita. Ihita, if you heard what Juliana said, I think it's important to note that uh, today we have billions of devices connected, uh, our phones, IoT devices, and you have experience working with uh, the IoT architecture. Do, do you think that the uh, framework that exists in terms of the OC model, in terms of the TCP IP protocol model, actually is made or designed uh, in a secure manner? And what should we do to actually integrate it in a mechanism that can actually promote the basics of security. Hite, if you're online. Yes. Welcome. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Karsim. Hi, everyone. Uh, fortunately, I can be there in person in Ethiopia this year. Um, yes, so I, I am Ahita. I work in IoT security, and cloud happens to be a very um, important component when we are dealing with IoT and data and storage and processing. Um, so. You know, even in our classes, you know, when I was doing my bachelor's, we were told that TCP IP was initially just designed for networking purposes and all the security aspects are more or less retrofit solutions on them. So um, I think as we are moving forward, we are um, burdening the TCP IP architecture protocol stack with uh, retrofit solutions to um, security solutions based on our use cases, based on our requirements and applications. But just uh, since I'm from, coming from a very technical point of view, I just wanted to clear it for the audience as to what do we mean by where does IoT come when we're dealing with cloud? Um, so IoT devices are, um, you could consider your smart refrigerator or a baby monitor, for example, or your um, uh, devices that you talk to, you have Alexa and a lot of others. I I'll refrain from taking names. Um, so all of these devices are, um, IoT devices are generally dumb devices. You know, they usually just gather the data and they don't do any uh, more. Most of the times they don't do any processing on site and then they kind of send the data to a server or a database where the data is stored, is analyzed, insights are generated. And then after which uh, the based on that, an end user receives these insights and then based on the queries that the end user has put, they get the required services. So um, in, in cloud in simple terms for anyone would mean the inter internet, right? So in generally in a cloud architecture, you'll have a front end and back end. If you've heard, there's a lot of software engineers are doing front end and back end uh, um, engineering. So front end is basically your client, us, the end users. We look at a user interface where we type a query, we requesting a web page, for example. And then back end is where this data processing management access controls are implemented. So when we talk about security for 
cloud uh, from a technical point of view you are not just looking at cloud computing cloud computing meaning not just the servers the database and anything that comprises of um, storing of your data and its management you're talking about uh, from the very beginning at the source of your data that could be your iot device itself an iot device a basic use case would be it um, a device a bunch of sensors that sense the temperature gather some uh, you know particulate matter or co2 levels in the atmosphere and send it to a particular server for storage the insights that you generate out of it using machine learning and deep learning algorithms is what is um, where the intelligence happens so when you talk about security you're talking about these end hardware devices. devices you're talking about the kind of communication protocols that these devices use which could be wifi 5g the like india has recently adopted 5g and um, you have lora van a lot of communication technologies which are uh, different in the way that they are made and they operate have to wish this data goes to your cloud for processing and then you apply some intelligent algorithms and uh, you have some insights so for this entire stretch you need security you need security best practices for the entire stretch um and when you look only from a, a cloud security point of view you have an like you know juliana just mentioned that it's not just uh, the organization that is running the cloud computing uh, services but you will have everybody else who is liable for the uh, data for the uh, security of the services and application uh, because um, as let's say for example if you're looking at cloud infrastructure itself you'll also need access control policies you just first of all it's important to authenticate who is sending the data right so that there is no fake data that is generated and stored in your systems then you need authorization controls you need to know who is authorized to what role for example do they have the authority to mod uh, modify the data delete the data or um, do they just have the authority to retrieve and send the data so this is and you'll also need some controls with respect to regular internal and external audits you need mechanisms and tools of visibility into your network into your computing storage um and your entire infrastructure basically so when you talk about this uh, your securing of your infrastructure you have to enforce compliance you need to practice due diligence even the employees in your organization need to be aware of the best practices they shouldn't fall prey to phishing attacks and um you know any kind of attacks that affect availability confidentiality and integrity of your data and services um then you need moderate mod moderation um then you need authentication protocol so there's a lot of things going on and this is where uh, you have standardization like juliana mentioned itu there are also um, there's also the european Te telecommunication standards institute etsi etc that um, has a cloud standards coordination working group that is working particularly on cloud security then you have the iso standards i think most of you might have heard of iso the international organization for standardization that has um, this particular control it's called iso 27001 which i have personally worked with and learned how to comply uh, create systems and organizations that comply with this standard which provides security te techniques and it also has um a particular aspect that focuses on cloud and non cloud uh, applications and the security then there's also iso uh, 191944 i won't get into the details as such but this particular uh, standard talks about um cloud computing and basically computing of uh, distributed platforms how how is the data how is the data supposed to flow what are the categories of data you need to have separate controls for sensitive data um how do you define your users how do you define a particular access to a particular data and who are your cloud service vendors how are they accredited so all of this is defined in the standard and this way there are lots of standards that your organization can comply to um to incorporate security and security best practices in their um, uh, in the kind of services that they're providing and in their infrastructure thank you very much heeda for that and it's important what you said that uh, there's so much that goes into the cloud infrastructure and it's not just the role of the technical community that is actually building it there is also the policy and the standard setting that is important uh, sara if you could just pick up from what uh, ehita said and basing on the basing on the simple perimeters that uh, confidentiality integrity and authenticity are quite important in any security do you think that uh, the cloud infrastructure that's available now in africa and now considering that icon has raised the, uh, has developed a new root server in nairobi that can actually put more cloud accessible to the people do you think that 
the infrastructure that's available is actually built by security by design and uh, what are the gaps that exist in actually improving this that the people can actually utilize and innovate upon mm -hmm. okay thank you uh, gabriel so uh, just to uh, pick on what Hita was talking about the uh, internet today. So if you think about the internet today, it's uh, millions of connected nodes. Uh, they are communicating with each other. And then you have another layer with IoT devices. And I've seen like in the billions, people are connecting their jackets to the internet. They are connecting like things that you'd not even imagine that would be connected to the internet. They are not, um, you need the core of the internet to be secure in order for you to do information exchange securely. Uh, if we think about the African continent, I think you've gone to so many panels at this IGF and you've had people saying that we still have a very long way to go. I've had people estimating uh, just the people who are connected between 20% and 30%. That means we still have a long way to get people to reach that level where people are connected. Uh, we still, um, I think I heard in one of the sessions, people are saying some African countries don't even have data protection laws. So that's another layer that you need to think about. We don't have the laws we don't have uh, connectivity we still have issues around uh, digital uh, literacy and literacy can be pro on many levels the first level of literacy is where you have the basic understanding to use these technologies the other layer is the understanding to legislate so you cannot even do legislation if you don't understand how these technologies work so we still have um, a, a really long way to go uh, though i think there is opportunity for us to, um, you know, like convene and put something together. Um, when that will happen or through which body um, is something I think we have to discuss this for us. Thank you very much. Just to add on that, uh, the cloud itself is actually quite connected to the internet and the TCP IP protocol is important in that. Do you think that uh, IPsec and DNSSEC is quite important in being enforced as a mechanism to ensure that cloud security is quite functional. Yeah, so I think I would say that um, security is not a black and white thing. So you can never be very secure or you cannot be not secure. It's a bit more nuanced because if I do a poll right now and I poll the people on the panel, for example, or the people in the room and ask them, what does security mean to you? Everyone has their own understanding of what they think security is. Um, the challenge with having these different levels of understanding, so to some people, it may be two-factor authentication. To some people, um, security may mean having, you know, a public key and private key to verify identities. To some people, it may be having a level of trust in a manufacturer and so on and so forth. The challenge with having this kind of different understanding in what security means is that that's what happens at manufacturing le level. So manufacturers also have their own understanding and they will just do what feels most comfortable for them. So what feels comfortable for a, a manufacturer may not necessarily be something that um, is good for end users. And I think that's why we need to have some sort of best practices. So we have a level at which we all agree that this is what security means to all of us, uh, and then start from there. And then we start to push um, uh, some of these things from there. But right now, uh, I think the challenge we have is that everyone is just doing what they think is best for them and, and security at that level. So I hope that answered the question. Thank you very much, Sarah. And it's good that you shared that security now does not have a single meaning. But Security in its sense it should, should be ubiquitous to everybody. We need to be able to, if you can secure our lives and our properties and our thoughts, it's important to say that at the least basic element, we should define the nomenclature and the structure of what security means. So we have been discussing about this cloud age computing and I'd like to welcome Nancy here just to give us a brief of what cloud computing means, what age computing means and share your reflections based on what you've heard from all the speakers what do you want to share and uh, what is more important in creating more understanding as we see there's a big capacity gap and a competency gap based on the big emerging technology terms we've been discussing now. Thank you, Carson, for this opportunity. I will share by saying that uh, most organizations have adopted cloud computing to a very, to a very a varying degree within their businesses or organization. However, with this adoption of the cloud comes the need to ensure that organization's cloud security strategy is capable of protecting 
threats that come up with uh, cloud security. And some of those threats include misconfigurations, unauthorized access, all the way to malicious attacks and cyber attacks. But most of the time when people in organization or businesses are not well equipped with uh, necessary skills on how to mitigate this risk is usually a problem and especially to our continent in Africa. We are still developing and we still have a long way to go. And with organizations facing such security concerns regarding cloud computing, despite the fact that these organizations have moved their sensitive data to important applications in the cloud, most of them don't have access to the infrastructure part of the data. So they still less control of what they can really do and in terms of security part. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Y you come from academia and also a technical background. So what do you think uh, is a signage mechanism that can happen to create uh, better understanding in terms of infra a secure, secure infrastructure or security by design when deploying uh, cloud infrastructure, especially in the African context? One, I will say one obvious one. We need to be more aware of First of all, the mechanisms of data that we expose to the cloud. And if our people are well equipped to understand and to know the risks involved and how well we can mitigate, we will be able to prevail. Thank you very much. Uh, this, that is quite interesting. To, to, to learn about the cloud uh, as a mother technology, we have to understand that it represents a core structure that brings a lot of these emerging technologies, AI, 5G, together. But when you have these technologies coming together without an understanding, the user, the user mostly faces the biggest difficulties. So Innocent, uh, I want you to speak from a user perspective, uh, knowing that uh, the user is the biggest uh, error point in all the security chain. As an end user, what do you think is your responsibility in ensuring that when you're accessing the cloud, you are accessing, accessing it right and in a mechanism that can actually ensure uh, privacy as well as uh, potency and authenticity of the data you share and the services that you want? All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Vincent. Uh, so just before I answer that question, uh, one thing I'd love to say is that uh, Juliana here mentioned that the cloud is actually convenient. Yeah, but we also realize that it is um, a cheaper option, yeah, compared to having to build the infrastructure, data centers, and and all that. But at what cost do we get this conveniency and uh, a low cost? Yeah, um, as a user, uh, of course, uh, most of us don't take that initiative to actually know where our data goes or who keeps it or if there are laws that are governing its protection and all that i uh, just i can give an example for example when you're installing uh, an app yeah there are usually terms and conditions but mostly we don't read them but also even though we read them i mean you don't have a choice right you don't have a choice in most cases uh if you don't accept then uh, you don't get access to the application and uh, so definitely uh, when you're really in need of the the app you end up accepting so as a user it starts it starts with um, you learning what what it uh, what is at stake here yeah uh, we do agree that there's so many uh, loopholes yeah because uh, for example like for for Africans uh, our data is not being stored here, no, yeah. But uh, how, to what extent do we trust the one who is keeping the data or where the data is actually going, yeah? It is a question, I think it's a question of um, can we trust or we cannot trust? Then if we cannot trust, then what do we do about it? Because as, as a user, your power to influence how that data is being stored or the laws that are governing it might be so limited yeah because you don't have authority like you're not a policy maker but the best i think i can do as a user is uh, influencing policy making or um, influencing uh, awareness as they said to to the right channels yeah if it is uh, for example 
uh, my ministry that uh, that that is responsible for ICT and all that. Yeah, do they know that actually citizens' data is being stored outside the country and it could be at risk? Do they know that? Uh, uh, the privacy of those citizens can actually be infringed, yeah? So I think that is the starting point for me as a user who, who now knows what is at stake, yeah? And from that, we can go to the next stage, yeah? Of now having, um, for example, our own, uh, in, uh, our own systems, yeah? Locally, we can localize it. Then that way we can be able to have our own... Um, that are being stored right here on our own soil. And also, uh, to the capacity bit of it, yeah? how many people actually in our countries understand uh, cloud computing? And to, uh, like, to what extent do they understand it? The benefits and the, and the doubts, yeah? That's, that's for me, yeah, thank you. It is quite great that you mentioned the role of digital security literacy in a communal sense because when we say when we say shared computation it means we are sharing the resources and before you can share something you need to know the sense of duty that you have to it example how ownership is important when you own something you can actually have more precedent to secure it so ownership of the infrastructure is a mechanism that can actually boost more and rally more societal engagement in pushing for security uh, but I'd like to say that uh, what is the role of ownership and localization of cloud infrastructure has to play in actually creating a secure framework that people can actually trust and engage with. And uh, this is open to anyone here on the panel. Maybe we begin with you, Juliana. Thank you, Gabriel. I think, uh, I, think uh, I really like the comment made by Sarah on how we have different perspectives on security. Uh, it, maybe it's a coincidence or not, but uh, yesterday my mother called me and she told me that her SIM card had been cloned and uh, the hackers had access to her bank account. So uh, in Brazil, for instance, uh, this layer of security, having your SIM card uh, to receive a text message to validate your access might not be enough because we have different sorts of uh, attacks and different threats that might not exist in other parts of the world. So security needs to be built from bottom up, as I already said. Uh, different places have different contexts and when you uh, build a standardized thing that, uh, that you think applies to every part of the world, you might be uh, not seeing some gaps that are, that are very local in, in nature. Uh, and I think, uh, I, I think, well, most of cloud services, uh, their nature, like the, at least the big ones, they're they're meant to be international, but they should also consider uh, the local aspects of of their functioning in order to be effective. And also, uh, the the users and the, the the organizations that may use of those services, they have a very important role in this because they they, they know their context, they know their their clients, they know their, the the limitations of their environment in terms of resources, in terms of know how, as uh, innocent. Uh, rightly mentioned that um, some users don't even understand uh, what's the concept of cloud computing when they accept to have their data uh, transferred to another country or uh, shared with a third party company that is not directly involved in, in the transaction that has been done there. Um, so uh, I think uh, us as, uh, all of us as members of the, the Global South, we have an important role as well to, to build awareness on this topic in our local context because uh, if we always rely on on the protocols and the standards that are built uh, from well to be to be held in Europe or, or the US or, or developed countries that have such different contexts we might be missing some things that are uh, right in front of us when it comes to uh, to security and to to awareness among users and among organizations yeah. thank you for that comment Yari if you can uh, if you can hear me how do you build up from what Juliana said, uh, the importance of having local context and local mechanisms to build the security protocols and uh, being somebody who is actually in Europe and you seeing the GDPR in play, what do you think does the, is the role that legislation plays in actually ensuring we have that local mechanisms of security by design when it comes to cloud services? Hello. Hello. Um, can, you hear me? can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Um, 
Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I, yes, I totally think that this is a very important topic. I have seen it here. Well, as I'm studying in Germany, currently, I have seen it is a very wide topic in the country. It is a, um, a kind of technology that the public sector is using a lot. Um, the ministries, the even the schools, universities, um, in, in terms of health, like all the um, all the uh, hospitals and as well as the people that need uh, to be to have um, um, sec social security, for example, also security services such as the army and even the police are using this kind of technologies in Germany, at least. Um, and it is also something that I compared with my um, country of origin, which is Costa Rica. I think the cloud has been also increasing in my country. And um, the things that we, of course, have different realities. We do not have a, a um, GDPR or like a really strong regulation in terms of data protection. We do have a law, but it is very weak, actually, uh, by 2020. From 237, um, 236 complaints that the Data Protection Agency received, just one of them were answered by the by the J Data Protection Authority. So we really see that there is a huge, um, yeah, there is a total lack of protection for the citizens and also for society. And law enforcement is not really working in the country at the moment. And we have been uh, living this in the last maybe eight to five years. And we had different uh, problems. And even though, and also with COVID, I think the situation uh, has been worsened because many companies, even my university, they were using cloud, but we had um, also very, um, a, a lot of issues with the internet. Um, so um, in, in infrastructure risks such as that we didn't have more access to the internet at some times and as the university or other institutions had all the information in, in the cloud, it was a big problem because they couldn't work, they couldn't um, attend uh, the people or the population in general that needed services. So it was a huge uh, problem and it's one of the issues that I think cloud security needs to improve, at least in the, the context of my country. Um, so I think, yeah, the solution is uh, trying to provide maintenance to this kind of, of services. Um, also, I think we should try to promote regular, regular, uh, regular security audits of the services, also trying to um, at the moment of having a contract with a with a, a with a cloud service provider, trying to really see the responsibilities of each part, and trying to see what what um, a, what person or what part has to do which function, so that everything's clear and at least in a moment of of crisis or in a moment in which there is not more internet or not more access to the cloud there is like another solution or like a plan b uh, so that we protect the citizens and they are not um, affected by these kind of risks and yeah um also one one aspect that i think is very important in terms of cloud is that there is not a perimeter like in in local environments in which there is um, a perimeter that I with this I mean that it cannot be controlled like when we are using the cloud um we cannot control the company that is providing us providing us from this service and we we have to in many of the times um just um um just think that this company is doing what is right but um yeah we cannot control sometimes if there are the appropriate security measures for each of the cases so um in this case of cloud computing at least in my country i would 
really recommend that it is necessary to enforce the data protection law so that we can at least, um, if we cannot control the service provided, if we cannot have control of the measurements and of the management that they are doing, at least uh, if there are risk, we can control the protection of the data of citizens that they, that they have in their cloud. And yes, this is something that I wanted to add. Um, and yeah, I will be glad to answer that. it. Thank you for Thank your you. wonderful <laughs> comments. Uh, we see that user-centric multi-layer security is important in every angle of uh, technological development. And uh, we are happy to be joined here by Mr. Ernest, who actually is involved with the ITU. Mr. Ernest, if you could share, what are the security implications and the considerations that the ITU considers when they're deploying cloud infrastructure? Hello, everyone. My name is Enes Mafuta. I'm currently chairing the Affordable Internet Access at the Internet Society, as well as a member of the SG13 of the ITU study group, which develops standards. This is all. Oh, wrong standard. All right, so um, to your question, Kassan, just allow me just to explain a few things on how standardization is being deployed um, in my country, I sit on the, what we call the technical committee that adopts and develops standards for the ICT sector. So how we develop these standards is that we follow the recommendations that are set on an international level like ITU. Yeah. So we have different standards group settings like cloud computing and future networks, which is HG13. I'm sure Juliana has an <laughs> yeah, she has an idea about that. Yeah, so in terms of uh, security, um, there is, um, we, we, we work with um, uh, regulators from different uh, parts of the world, uh, private sector, all stakeholders involved. And um, we come together to find and to mitigate and how we can uh, eliminate these uh, threats that exist in the cloud computing. So when it comes to security, it's not something that we can just say we have eliminated because every day threats are being born. Different threats are being born every day on the internet. Like everyone is being born every day with different mindsets and they have a way of uh, penetrating the architecture design and security. So what I can say is that even though I'm not an expert in standardization, but um, I think it's very important to um, to focus more in developing standards of uh, security and how we can ensure that the cloud is secure for use and it's trusted. Because one of the challenges that we have right now all over is the lack of trust in the cloud. It's a great tool and it's a great platform that I would really encourage that everyone to be using, but the lack of trust out there is so huge. And how do we come together to ensure that everyone trusts the cloud computing services? So I'll leave the answers to the room. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ernest. And it's important that you said that trust is important. Uh, we are under the scene that we want a common, resilient, and trustworthy internet under the IGF today. And as we have seen, it's important having that multi-stakeholder approach building in each and every angle in facilitating that security is quite something that is personal, private, and operational. So if I leave, it, leave questions to you, audience, uh, is security a standard or quite an objective? I want to hear your perspective and your questions based on this matter. What do you think uh, we should do to secure the crowd and computation, knowing that we are in the age of uh, consumerism 3.0, where everything is based on sharing and access? Please, you're welcome. Any questions, reflections, recommendations are welcome. Don't be shy. <laughs> Ma'am, would you like to? <laughs> no? Okay. Nancy, would you like to take that question? Any more reflections based on our subject? I will say regulation is a big part. If we look at um, 
the data protection, the GDPR from the European, I think European Union. There is a lot of um, regulations on the data that can get out of their continent. Compared to other continents like our own in Africa, whereby we don't have regulations, it's a lot to deal with. First of all, establishing standards that we actually need regulations in our continent. So it's an ongoing conversation that we, think we need to think about and we need to come up with solutions that can really favor our own. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy, for the comment. Uh, I would just like to add to that. I think, of course, regulation is important and building standards on a global level is quite important as well. Uh, but I think one of the gaps that we have in the market today is that uh, people have difficulties translating what's in the regulation into actual practice. So when we're talking about cloud, uh, we know that uh, people that are developing services are probably the software developers, the software architects, uh, the infrastructure engineers and these people need to be aware of how to turn regulation into actual concrete uh, lines of code and actual uh, technical material that allows for uh, security to be spread out as well as organization. So uh, regulations, of course, are, are quite important, but uh, if they only exist in the abstract, then they, they have no, no, no practice. And together with that, we should also have uh, authorities that enforce uh, the standards and the regulations, so, such as data protection authorities, they're starting to, to grow now around the world, uh, but they're still lacking in, in many parts of the Global South, as we are well aware, uh, being, being part of the Global South ourselves. So uh, regulation, of course, is, is quite important, but we should not forget the practical implementation of it, so that uh, the people who are designing the technology themselves know how to incorporate these, uh, these standards and, and these principles into its its very architecture. Uh, so this is when when we talk about security by design. Uh, this is this is the idea. So security by design should be spread out uh, in, in the technical world, not only in the in the legal world, not only in the policy world. Uh, there should be better means of communication between these channels because right now uh, we have a lot of beautiful things written uh, on policy frameworks on on international regulations, but. Uh, is this really being translated into actual practice, into actual code? And uh, from a Latin American and a African perspective, I think there are still a lot of gaps that we need to address. Thank you. So inclusive decision making is important in that aspect. And uh, as you said, that the architecture itself should be the act in terms of regulation. Uh, in a sense, in Africa, we do have something called the Malabo Convention. Do you think it considers uh, cloud security? Very good, thanks for that question. I was actually going to mention the Malabo Convention and my complaints about it. Uh, one thing is that um, we do agree that regulation and uh, uh, policies are so important, but to what extent are we actually willing to put these regulations and policies on ground? The Malabo Convention, uh, the last session I was in there, it, the, for it to be ratified, we need one more country to sign. Can you imagine one more African country has failed to sign the, the Malabo Convention on Cyber Security and Data Privacy? So meaning in actual sense, it is not ratified. It is of no use to us when it's not ratified. Yeah. So um, I should say for now, as Africa, we are lame uh, in that aspect. So we don't expect uh, to have um, we don't uh, expect to have arguments about uh, privacy and uh, and how our data is being managed without we having something on ground that we can actually relate to, which is a policy that we have all agreed to. And then also, uh, how sure are you that actually when the Malabo Convention comes into uh, uh, is actually ratified. I'm very sure uh, that there have been so many parliamentarians and I'm very sure some have pledged to go and uh, convince their countries to actually sign. At least we shall get maybe Tanzania to sign and we can make the number to get the conversion ratified. But how sure are we um, uh, that uh, as a continent, we are actually going to make use of this conversion, yeah? Especially in the aspect of uh, cloud, yeah? Uh, because we've seen so many conversions that are, I should call them lame. The implementation is a very big problem. 
yeah and we all know our challenge as uh, as uh, as uh, sit, uh, okay uh, our challenge with the government especially here in our region governments have this mindset that they should be owning citizens they want to know what you do they want to know what every organization what data kind of data every organization has and what so even though we are to for example say we now have our own infrastructure cloud infrastructure in africa to what extent are we going to trust our countries <laughs> that is quite a fascinating comment uh, but you know in, in the sense that computation code itself is data it's someone's thought so i think it's quite personal it's user driven and user centric we should decentralize this meaning in forms of literacy and operations where each and every user understands the implications of what it means to be connected to the cloud and to any infrastructure, beginning the backbone infrastructure as well as the top level use cases. Because most of us just understand the top level use cases without the hidden implications. And these are the angles or other doors which legislators or governments can actually use to create uh, some sort of confusion or conflict of interest of what security means for the people versus what they do with it. So it's important for us as users, us as a community to understand how we create this uh, multilateral uh, and multi-driven consensus of what it means to really be secure and to be connected on cloud. Because in the end, caring is sharing and we are sharing this computational era and it's important that we secure it for the benefit of the coming generations. I will still open up to you, audience, if you have any reflections and questions. And do we have any online questions, sir? Um, I, I, I wanted to uh, add something Please, uh, to the discussion. Yeah. So uh, the first thing, when you were talking about local context, I think something that we need to talk about when we talk about local context is relevance. So, uh, and value. So what value is this thing adding to me? If you're, you're saying, okay, I want to connect this person to the internet, I want them to use cloud services, but what value is it adding to them? And if, if it adds value, people will use the, the product for the service. So I think we need to think about that. And when you're talking about context, there are so many things. There is language. Um, is it in a language I understand? Language from the point of view of Czech language is very complex, but also in my local language. So I think we need to also think about some of these issues as we uh, discuss. Then uh, in terms of the multi-stakeholder model, um, I think Juliana mentioned that uh, designers are missing on the table. I think we really need to... Um, before this thing becomes a, a product. So one thing I've been doing for the last three years is thinking about it at idea level, thinking about the design of IoT while it's still an idea. So I want to build this, I don't know, smart way in scale. How can I embed values such as security, integrity, privacy, and trust at this level when it's still an idea before it goes even to be, you know, before you even start doing the sketches and things like that. And the other part I think I'd like to add is that uh, maybe we need to start teaching some of these things in our um, curriculum at high school and at uh, university level. So teaching ethics in the curriculum so that as people are graduating and going to the job market, they're actually already thinking about ethics. They're thinking about trust. They're thinking about privacy and some of these other things. So we get them at the beginning before it actually becomes a product and then we'll be here all over again complaining that this thing does not work the way we wanted it to work. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. And it's important when you said that uh, locality really breeds uh, relevancy. Uh, we have a comment uh, from Brad B. Rudovic who said that uh, this morning Gambia announced it's signing for the Malabo Convention. So at last, that one sign that you're looking for in the sense, has been there. And there's maturity and there's importance of having sessions like this where you have actually legislators and parliamentarians come and discuss with us and feel our pain and passion. Uh, so, in a sense, we did it. <laughs> so, uh, any more questions from the audience? Good. After all, after all we, have, uh, we have heard, all the reflections we need. I just want Nancy to do some closing remarks since you, you were the one who actually organized this. What do you think are the next steps, critical steps in ensuring cloud security? Thank you so much, Carson, for being our moderator and bringing in the conversation in an interesting and engaging way. First of all, 
I've gotten some insights about cloud computing from a perspective of not being a technical, like I'm a technical person, but there are perspectives you cannot get from when you're technical and when you listen to actual users and the things they bring out and issues they articulate, like the, the signing of, you call it Mal Malabo Convention. I wouldn't have known about that if I didn't join this meeting. So thank you so much for highlighting such issues and ongoing conversation of what Sarah mentioned about educating our users from when they are maybe right from school in issues of trust and ways they can grow up trusting that even if we have the cloud security, if we have cloud computing in our continent, how do we trust our data to, uh, to common to share it commonly and also going forward ongoing conversation on things we can collaborate within the continents that have made it like maybe Europe and America and we see what things can we improve in our own continent. So thank you so much everyone and thank you to our panel speakers today and everyone who contributed today. Thank you. And on that note, we are officially done. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, hopefully, you will be way more protected when you join the cloud. Thank you.